Berlin, 1829. A frail man sits alone, scribbling furiously into the night. His equations twist and coil. Strange, rhythmic, almost musical. His body is failing, but his mind is racing toward the infinite. His mathematics would one day power quantum physics, engineering, and computer science. Yet few outside mathematics even know his name. This is Carl Gustav Jakob Jacobi, the mathematician who taught us how the world transforms. Potsdam, Prussia, December 10th, 1804. A child is born into a middle-class Jewish family, the Jacobis. His father, Simon Jacobi, a successful banker. His mother, Rachel Lehman, proud and scholarly. The family expects Karl to follow in his father's footsteps into the world of commerce, balance sheets, and practical affairs. But young Karl Gustav Jakob Jacobi has other plans. He isn't satisfied just reading the classics. By age 12, Jacobi can translate Greek and Latin with fluency. His teachers at the Potsdam Gymnasium quickly notice that their best student isn't just gifted in language. He sees mathematics the way poets see rhythm. For him, numbers aren't quantities. They're patterns, relationships, symmetries, a language even older than Greek. He begins to correct his teachers politely but confidently. When they introduce geometry, he's already imagined ways to extend it beyond the page. At home, he spends nights reconstructing the works of Euclid and Archimedes. He studies algebraic equations that few teenagers could even read, let alone understand. By his mid-teens, Jacobi isn't just learning mathematics. He's thinking like a mathematician, seeking generality, abstraction, elegance the qualities that will define his career. At 17, Jacobi enters the University of Berlin, one of Europe's rising centers of science and philosophy. It's the age of enlightenment and revolution, ideas spreading faster than printing presses can handle. Jacobi throws himself into everything, mathematics, philology, philosophy. He studies under Enno Dirksen, a brilliant but rigid mathematician, and befriends August Leopold Kreller, the visionary who will soon found the journal for die Reine und Angewandte Mathematik, the first major journal devoted solely to mathematics. Between 1823 and 1825, Jacobi begins writing papers that hint at something new, deep connections between algebraic equations and number theory. His doctoral dissertation, completed in 1825, explores the theory of algebraic equations a topic that once fascinated Gauss himself. At just 21 years old, he earns his PhD, and within a year, he's lecturing, his blackboard filled edge to edge with formulas and geometric sketches. His lectures are so intense, students say he seems to think faster than he can speak. In 1826, Krell publishes Jacobi's first papers in his new journal. For the mathematical world, a new name has appeared, C.G.J. Jacobi, and his style is unmistakable. Where others see isolated problems, Jacobi sees universes of structure, families of equations connected by deep symmetry. He's just 22, but already his peers whisper that he might become one of the greats. Eighteen twenty-seven, a bitter Prussian winter. At just 23, Carl Gustav Jakob Jacobi is appointed professor of mathematics at the University of Königsberg, one of the youngest in Europe. His arrival marks the beginning of a mathematical revolution. The 1820s were a golden age for mathematics. Carl Friedrich Gauss had reshaped number theory. Niels Henrik Abel, the Norwegian prodigy, had uncovered the secrets of elliptic functions. Strange, looping patterns hidden inside integrals once thought unsolvable. Jacobi saw something even deeper, 
a hidden symmetry that Abel had glimpsed but never fully charted. Jacobi transformed elliptic functions from isolated curiosities into a complete symmetrical framework. He defined three new functions, SN, SAN, and DN, elegant counterparts to sine and cosine, but living on a higher dimensional stage. These functions captured how systems repeat and evolve, the oscillation of a pendulum, the path of a planet, even the motion of electrons long before they were discovered. Jacobi's 1829 masterpiece, Fundamenta Nova Theoriae Functionum Ellipticarum turned elliptic functions into one of the central pillars of modern analysis. It wasn't just elegant, it was powerful. Elliptic functions became the mathematical engine behind celestial mechanics, complex analysis, and, a century later, quantum field theory. Between 1829 and 1833, Jacobi's fame spreads across Europe. He corresponds with Gauss, debates Abel's legacy, and exchanges ideas with rising mathematicians like Dirichlet and Liouville. His papers, published in Krell's journal, ignite a wave of interest and controversy. Was Jacobi building on Abel's discoveries or surpassing them? Jacobi's approach, however, was uniquely his own. Algebraic precision, geometric intuition, and an obsession with generalization. To him, mathematics wasn't a collection of tricks. It was a language of symmetry. Then, Jacobi made another leap. He asked a deceptively simple question. What happens to space when you change perspective? His answer became one of the most important tools in all of modern science, the Jacobian determinant. The Jacobian measures how space stretches, compresses, or twists when you move between coordinate systems. It is the backbone of multivariable calculus, used to change variables in integrals, model dynamic systems, and describe transformations across geometry and physics. Every time a fluid flows, a map distorts, or a computer simulates motion, Jacobi's mathematics is at work. What began as an abstract curiosity now powers machine learning, robotics, and engineering. By the mid-1830s, Carl Gustav Jakob Jacobi had already transformed mathematics. Elliptic functions, determinants, number theory, all bore his signature. But now, his attention turned towards something even grander, the laws that govern motion itself. In Ireland, a young genius named William Rowan Hamilton was reimagining mechanics not as forces acting on matter, but as geometry unfolding through time. Between 1834 and 1837, Hamilton introduced his Hamiltonian formulation, a new way to describe motion through energy and coordinates rather than pure force. When Jacobi read Hamilton's papers, he recognized something profound. This was not just mechanics, it was mathematical structure. He extended Hamilton's ideas, rewriting them in the universal language of analysis. Jacobi developed what would become known as the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. A single, elegant formula capable of describing everything from a falling apple to the orbit of a planet, from a vibrating string to the motion of light. To Jacobi, motion wasn't a series of pushes and pulls. It was geometry in motion, a pattern unfolding in time. His Hamilton-Jacobi equation turned dynamics into geometry, linking energy, position and momentum as parts of a single mathematical surface. In this view, the universe wasn't a set of separate laws. It was one continuous transformation, a flow of information through space and time. Jacobi had revealed something breathtaking, the same mathematics that governed planets also governed particles. Centuries of physics, compressed into a single equation. A century later, physicists would rediscover Jacobi's insight. In 1926, Erwin Schrödinger derived his famous wave equation, the foundation of quantum mechanics. What he realized, to his astonishment, was that Schrödinger's own equation was a direct descendant of Jacobi's. The mathematics that once described planets now described electrons. 
The bridge between classical and quantum physics had been written by Jacobi, nearly a hundred years before quantum theory even existed. From Schrödinger to Feynman, every theory that treats motion as a wave or a probability flow echoes Jacobi's mathematics. His insights became the invisible backbone of modern physics. By the late 1840s, Carl Gustav Jakob Jacobi was no longer the radiant young professor from Königsberg. His body was failing, but his mind burned brighter than ever. Decades of relentless calculation had taken their toll. He worked through the night, often forgetting to eat or sleep. To Jacobi, mathematics wasn't a profession. It was existence itself. Then came revolution. Across Europe, Political upheaval shook monarchies and universities alike. In the chaos, Jacobi's salary from the Prussian state was suspended. He found himself, one of Europe's greatest mathematicians, suddenly in poverty. Yet he kept teaching, he kept writing. Even when he could no longer afford medicine, Jacobi refused to stop creating. His students remembered him as fierce and fearless. He demanded precision, not for grades, but for truth. Mathematics, he once said, must be pursued for its own sake, not for application, not for utility. He trained minds that would later shape modern analysis, number theory, and physics. Every lecture was a battle between mind and mortality, a man racing against his own decline. In 1850, illness overtook him completely. Smallpox spread through Berlin. Jacobi, weakened but still writing, refused to leave his work unfinished. On February 18, 1851, Carl Gustav Jakob Jacobi, the man who revealed the geometry of motion and the structure of the infinite, died at just 46. He left behind pages of brilliance, so dense, so ahead of their time, that it would take decades for the world to understand them. The Jacobian determinant, his creation became the foundation of multivariable calculus and the silent engine of machine learning, fluid dynamics and computer graphics. His elliptic functions form the core of cryptography and signal processing. His Hamilton-Jacobi equation bridges Newton's universe with Schrodinger's quantum world. Every physicist, every engineer, every student who studies motion or transformation stands, knowingly or not, on Jacobi's shoulders. Jacobi once said, It is true that a mathematician, like a poet or painter, is a maker of patterns. In those patterns, of motion, of symmetry, of creation, Jacobi found the shape of the infinite. 